Hello, and welcome to the Furniture Flipper's Guide. <laughs> no? Hi, y'all. I'm Autumn, and welcome to the Furniture Flipper's Guide. Today, it is spring, and we have some fun new techniques I'm going to show you. Number one, we're going to learn how to do marbling epoxy. Yes, it looks so good. It looks real. You will be amazed. You can do it on a desk. You can do it on a table. You can do it on so many things and make it look like you have the nicest, fanciest furniture. So stick with me. I'll show you exactly how I do it. So this piece was given to me by a friend who is getting rid of some furniture and I really just wanted to update it. I had been chosen for the Maker's Challenge to host it and so I picked this piece because I thought I could do something really fun. So before I even got started on the epoxy, I did some fun techniques. I added paint to the sides and I added some cool texturing with material to cover the glass. And then it was time to get started on epoxy, but I wasn't quite ready or confident enough to do my epoxy on the piece. So I decided to do a practice piece <laughs> and I had a lot of fun, but let's talk about the actual steps for creating the epoxy. So there's two parts of epoxy and you'll take part A and they will be even parts and then you add part B. And part is actually a hardener. So once you're adding that to the first part A, that means you start your timeline. It's very, very important to mix really well so that you get them evenly distributed with each other. So now that I have my base created, I can start adding some color to a little bit of the epoxy. I separated out some of the epoxy and had a really hard time getting the lid off of the paint, but I'll get it, I promise. And then added some black paint to the epoxy. This will be part of the marbling. I then added white to the base because that's going to be my base color for my marble. And for the test, we taped off this old outdated work table because why not? It's not gonna hurt it to try this. All right, it was time to pour. But before we pour, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor for this video. I have so many problems with bugs coming home with me on my furniture pieces. And I decided I needed to take this problem into my own hands. So I used Pesty. Pesty is a pro-grade formula of pest control that's customized to you. Anyone can do it and it takes as little as 10 minutes to apply. It's kid and pet friendly and you get a bug free guarantee with a treatment that saves you hundreds of dollars. Now I can bring home any piece of furniture with no more concerns of bugs coming home with me. I love my new DIY bestie, Pesty. All right, it's time to pour the epoxy. I got brave enough to do it and got started. Realized is that I had not made enough of the base coat. So we had to spread it out pretty thin. And that was okay because this is what it was for. The testing piece was for us to get some practice. So it is so much easier to use your hands and the gloves to spread it out. One thing I learned is to use a torch to get rid of the air bubbles that are coming up. It's really important to do that. And as you can see, they just pop and go away and you have such a better looking smooth surface. You can use a heat gun or a blow dryer, but the torch seemed to be my best option. Okay, so here's where we get to use that black epoxy. You really just get to have fun with this. Think about marbling and you get to drizzle the paint across. The drizzle should kind of go in the direction that you want the marbling to look 
And then you take a sponge brush and just kind of blur those lines. Squiggle them a little bit. If you like my very professional um, vocabulary, drizzle and squiggle, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. While we're doing this, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to go. We have so much fun here doing fun projects, DIYs, furniture flips. So go like and subscribe and I am so excited to have you here. So the next thing we're gonna do is follow this with a blow dryer. This just adds more technique, it adds more of that marbling look and it blends all of those lines really beautifully together. I tried to make the blow dryer go different directions as well, just to kind of make those lines look more fun and, and different. And we followed it up with a heat gun. What do you think so far? I think for a first try, it's not too bad. I think we're ready for the real thing. And I've got something else fun to show you. Keep watching. All right, it was time to get to work on my real piece, and I was so excited, but so nervous. So I taped off the areas I did not want the epoxy to go on to, but I also know that if I need to, I can sand down the epoxy. And I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. But first, we're gonna mix up our epoxy and this time I made much more because I knew that I would need a lot more for my pieces. I separated two parts out because I'm gonna have three colors this time. My base will still be white, so I mixed up the white epoxy pigment and then added black epoxy pigment to the other. Now this next area, I'm doing gold, and so I added a mica powder of gold, and this is gonna be the fun extra touch that I'm adding to my piece. All right, here we go. Let's talk about <laughs> what I did not expect. I did not expect for this epoxy to go everywhere. I knew that it would drip over, but the wind started taking it everywhere. So if you are doing a foxy, make sure you completely cover the ground and make sure it's like a very wide space because this, <laughs> this was a disaster. But we're worried about the piece, not so much the ground. As you can see, I taped off the insides where these two pieces will be coming together because I did not want that epoxy to make it difficult for the pieces to push together. I spread out the epoxy to where it covered all of the areas and let it flow over the edges. What's really nice is that the epoxy self levels so you can help it to cover the edges, but it is going to self level itself and start covering the edges as well. I followed it up with the blow dryer and the torch to get rid of those bubbles and smooth it out and did the fun drizzle technique. So you've seen this already. So I'm just gonna show a little bit of this technique, but then we're gonna add some other color. So let me show you that. Here is where I added the gold. I wanted just a fun marbling technique that mixed in some color. Lots of the marble that you see um, in kitchens and things like that have a splash of shine or gold, so I thought this would be fun to add to my piece. Blended it with that blow dryer technique. Fix those edges a little bit as they were dripping, made sure every area was covered, and here's a sneak peek at what it looks like. What do you think? Now here is what the ground looked like afterwards. I mean, I did not prep well. 
I recommend you do more prep, putting more boards and things underneath. But then I added a little bit of paint on the edges and followed this by sanding my piece. So I started with a high grit of 500. So you want your marble not to be shiny because real marble is usually a very dull color. So I went from 500 grit and switched all the way up to 4,000 grit. This will really make the piece smooth. It will get rid of any little imperfections and it will give it that nice, dull, smooth finish. All I needed to do was wipe it down and put it back together. So this is what the piece looked like before. And here is the after. Did you love this finish? I am in love with it. I think it turned out so good. It looks so realistic. My cat never loves me. She never wants to be in my lap or be pet. So I'm not sure what's happening, but I'm not gonna stop it because this is very weird. Also, if you've been wondering, these chairs, they have held up amazing. I can sit on them, I work with them all the time. Nothing is rubbing off, they are lasting. If you wanna know the technique on how I painted these chairs, yes, I painted them. I've got a video for you, I'll share it right here.